Item Number SCP-6004 Object Class Uncontainable Tiamat Site Responsible AVSNTS Site-40 Director Alan Tibbles Research Head Kate Lloyd Assigned Task Force MTF Omicron-40 Level 4-6004 Classified Item Number SCP-6004 Object Class Uncontainable Tiamat Special Container Procedures Despite the best efforts of the Foundation, SCP-6004 remains uncontainable until such a time that drastically more powerful containment measures are made available, or SCP-6004 returns to an inactive state of its own accord. As such, current containment procedures revolve around the preparation for such a time and minimizing collateral damage caused by its current state. SCP-6004 is to be constantly monitored via remaining functional satellite imagery, with satellite arrays to be appropriated from world governments if necessary. Constant reports of its location, direction, speed, and activities are to be provided at all times to better aid global task forces in the evacuation of populations from likely attack sites and impact zones. Due to the volume of casualties, civilians with better chances are prioritized at the discretion of task force members on the ground. Aid shelters and temporary housing are to be provided in rural, remote, and off-the-grid areas, including small towns, Foundation containment sites, and settlements previously attacked by SCP-6004. To avoid drawing the attention of SCP-6004, all Foundation sites are to minimize pollution and carbon emissions as best as possible, with the aim of switching to solar, geothermal, or nuclear power as soon as is feasible. Research into the most effective anomalous containment measures and weaponry is to be carried out on Foundation and Global Occult Coalition sites globally, with both organizations to collaborate on these projects. Amnestic production has been increased by 230% in order to return the world's unawareness of the veil following SCP-6004 successful containment. Description: SCP-6004 is a massive serpentine entity of variable size, measuring between 0.2 and 1900 km in length, with mass proportional to its length. While its physiology varies from resembling various Australian ophidians, its coloration has consistently been primarily black, with dull prismatic stripes running vertically down its length, with a pale underbelly. SCP-6004 possesses a pair of horns and a larger array of teeth more than what would be expected or biologically possible on non-anomalous ophidians. Horns featured thousands of engraved depictions of wildlife. SCP-6004 is observed to move at abnormally fast speeds, often in excess of 1,200 km per hour on land and 2,800 km per hour underwater. This movement often creates large rifts in the terrain and tsunamis in the water, along with sonic concussions both in and out of the water. SCP-6004 exhibits strength and durability far beyond what its proportions would suggest, having bite force strong enough to crush key units, destroy mountains, and throw itself into the upper troposphere. It is able to fly at this altitude in a fashion similar to swimming. By maintaining consciousness, SCP-6004 is able to alter weather patterns and atmospheric conditions on a global scale at will primarily by exerting a mild cooling effect on the Earth's average temperature by 2 degrees Celsius. This effect varies in intensity and effect locally, with the most significant changes being intensified snowfall in glacial areas and poles, increased rainfall in arid areas, and severe thunderstorms globally. The most directly threatening use of SCP-6004's ability to control weather conditions is when directly within its line of sight, often in response to outside stimulus or its theoretical emotional state. This most commonly takes the form of severe thunderstorms, hurricane generation, torrential rain, and the generation of extremely large waves. It uses this ability primarily as a form of offense in an area, typically striking cities, mines, and power plants with severe weather events before striking physically. Rain generated in this form has been observed to spontaneously generate plant life within its area of effect. 
This flora has been observed to grow extremely rapidly, and is at times hostile to human life. SCP-6004 possesses several powerful anomalous qualities regarding itself. Thaumaturgical scans have shown that SCP-6004 possesses a form of selective tangibility, which has been observed at times of attack. It has been observed that SCP-6004 can cause damage selectively, seemingly choosing which structures are destroyed or left unharmed during a physical assault. It often uses its ability when swallowing organic materials, primarily animals, while avoiding swallowing earth or buildings. SCP-6004 is known to consume living human persons when besieging populated areas, and is often observed regurgitating various fauna local to the immediate area. Addendum 6004-1 Discovery and Early History of SCP-6004 Discovery and Early Investigation into SCP-6004 Statement from Site Director Alan Tibbles Prior to the discovery of SCP-6004 in the March of 2020, there was much discussion within the Foundation regarding how much humanitarian aid to provide towards fighting the 2019-2020 Australian bushfires. We, of course, knew they were not our problem to deal with, being the result of non-anomalous climate change and poor government action. But it is human nature to want to help one another, and in the case of those of us at Australian sites, our homelands. Still, despite my own feelings towards the matter, we at Site 40 were spread too thin to offer any more than nominal support to firefighters and rescue groups, particularly with the growing concern that we had towards the unusual seismic activity being felt around the Australian continent. We knew it was anomalous. Emails and communication were sent back and forth discussing what to do. Ultimately, survey teams were dispatched to find their source, but due to the fires, these efforts were less than successful. We decided to wait until things calmed down before trying again. We all know now what a mistake that was. The lesson to be learned here is simple. We need to stop working around the poor decisions made by the non-anomalous world, and act more directly. Had we done that, we wouldn't be in the mess we now find ourselves. Discovery of SCP-6004 Beginning in December 1988, unusual seismic activity began to be detected throughout mainland Australia, and in particular around the eastern coast of New South Wales. Initially, this was not believed to be anomalous and was ignored. However, over the following years, this seismic activity grew in intensity and frequency, until finally in 2019, it was decided that investigators would be dispatched from Site-40 to investigate. Investigation showed that the source of this seismic activity was located within Wallamy National Park, an area comprised of 501,703 hectares of wilderness located between the Blue Mountains. Investigations were halted before more precise measurements could be taken by the 2019-2020 bushfire season, when intense wildfires affected the area in question, and it was decided that investigation would resume upon the fires being put under control. While waiting for conditions to improve, drastically more intense seismic activity was detected from within the area, culminating on the February 10, 2020 when firefighter Mark Delaney was reported to have disobeyed orders while attempting the rescue of a panicked civilian who had fled into dangerous terrain within Wallamy National Park. The subsequent events led to SCP-6004 emerging from a subterranean cavern and departing the area. Foundation investigation into this event uncovered the remains of Mr. Delaney pinned beneath a large granite boulder located in close proximity to the ruined entrance to a large subterranean cabin surrounded by evidence of rock slides and an emergence event. The examination of Mr. Delaney's remains revealed a portable video camera was worn on his helmet, and captured the events following his attempted rescue of the as-yet-unknown civilian leading up to the emergence of SCP-6004. A transcript of the recovered footage follows. Footage begins showing Mark Delaney, among other firefighters, standing among several parked fire trucks. Firefighters can be seen attempting to suppress intense fire fronts with high-pressure hoses, and visibility is very poor due to smoke and reflected light from intense flames. 
Mr. Delaney is requesting support from another firefighter and retrieving a ladder from a fire truck, when an unidentified woman is seen running towards the flames. Stop right there! The woman appears unable to hear Mr. Delaney, and is in a highly panicked state. She continues into the woodland at speed, with Mr. Delaney giving chase. Another firefighter can faintly be heard calling for him to stop. Jamie? Jamie, come back! Oi, no! It's too hot! Camera's view is largely obscured by smoke and embers as Mr. Delaney enters the woodland. The path appears wide, but is surrounded by intense flames. All that can be heard is the roar of the flames. Mr. Delaney continues to chase after the woman, occasionally swearing. The camera jolts violently for eight seconds, causing Mr. Delaney to fall. He returns to his feet and resumes running. Fuck me, it's getting worse. Shit! Lady, come back! Mr. Delaney occasionally loses sight of the woman, running for an additional 83 seconds before entering a clearing on the edge of a ravine. Past the ravine, a mass of flaming wilderness can be seen. The unidentified woman can be seen cowering at the edge of the ravine. Come here! Mr. Delaney approaches the woman, grabbing her and examining her. She appears hysterical and unresponsive to Mr. Delaney's questioning. Fucking hell. Okay. Okay. Mr. Delaney lifts the woman out of frame, presumably into a fireman's carry. The camera swings over the edge of the ravine, showing a large reptilian mass partially exposed by a fissure in the ground. Fuck me. The reptilian mass shifts, with the movement seemingly causing another earth tremor. Mr. Delaney stumbles hanging onto the ground. A jutting ledge on the opposite side of the ravine splits from the surrounding earth, with several flaming trees falling into the scaled mass. The mass splinters away from the burning vegetation, and much more severe tremors begin. An extremely loud roaring sound can be heard, cutting out the audio for the remainder of the footage. The scaled mass retreats beneath the earth. The camera looks towards the sky, showing several lightning flashes through the smoke and rain beginning to fall. Camera shape resumed to be a result of the earth tremor's worsens, as the ravine returns to view. A much larger mass emerges from the earth, resulting in the upheaval of a significant quantity of stone and earth. Frame-by-frame -frame analysis shows that the mass is ahead of SCP-6004, on fire and visibly roaring. Mr. Delaney and the unidentified woman are thrown back, with the camera pointing to the sky. SCP-6004 can be seen rising into the air before disappearing in the smoke. Torrential rain begins to fall into frame. Flames recede. End log. Following the emergence of SCP-6004, severe thunderstorms rapidly formed over bushfire-affected areas in Australia, effectively dousing them by mid-March. While the Foundation began to track SCP-6004, Investigation revealed that areas affected by these thunderstorms began to exhibit anomalously rapid plant growth. Additionally, both Foundation and mundane weather monitoring organizations detected a reversing of global warming trends. Addendum 6004-2 Early Behavior of SCP-6004 Initially, SCP-6004 remained airborne within these thunderstorms which progressively expanded an area and began appearing further and further from the location of its origin point. Foundation monitors quickly realized that the anomalous rains formed by SCP-6004 were mainly forming above areas affected by desertification and deforestation. During the initial phase of SCP-6004 remaining within Australian borders, these storms covered thousands of square kilometers of farmland, forest, residential areas and cities. This was accompanied by large-scale destruction of property as large trees displaced structures. Multiple Foundation sites were mobilized to aid in the search, rescue, and relocation efforts in aid of those affected by the event, with global occult coalitions offering support. Meanwhile, multiple unsuccessful efforts were made by the Foundation to neutralize SCP-6004, which had been determined to be the logical cause of these events. These attempts were typically met with violence from SCP-6004, often in the form of lightning strikes or bites. It was during one of these failed attempts that SCP-6004 was first observed to attack a human settlement. 
On the March 27, 2020, SCP-6004 directly attacked the city of Canberra. At 10.47 am, intense thunderstorms formed over the city, with wind speeds measuring over 140 km per hour. This was promptly followed by SCP-6004 descending from the cloud canopy and making landfall, having attained an unknown size and mass. It proceeded to strike and bite the ground across the city, swallowing a great measure of infrastructure, as well as the city's inhabitants. Notably, SCP-6004 targeted Parliament House in particular, flinging most of the building and its occupants into the air with extreme force with some debris and individuals later being seen on orbiting Earth, including Australian Prime Minister Scott Morrison and State Premier Gladys Berejiklian. This attack prompted response from multiple Foundation mobile task forces, including both ETA-5 Jaeger bombers and Tau-5 Samsara, but by time of arrival, SCP-6004 had departed, and 74% of Canberra had been destroyed with 197,728 persons missing. Despite renewed efforts from both the Foundation and the GOC to neutralize, redirect, or otherwise contain SCP-6004, it continued to attack human settlements, largely targeting cities, mines, areas of intense pollution, and coal-fired power plants. Each of these attacks resulted in the majority of the population of a given area being consumed by SCP-6004, with surviving CCTV footage showing SCP-6004 to be simultaneously tangible and intangible as it visibly faced through structures believed to have been deliberately left intact by the entity. Following these attacks, SCP-6004 has always been observed to travel to remote locations and regurgitate consumed materials. Ensuing investigation into these sightings showed drastically increased wildlife populations in areas where SCP-6004 was seen to vomit, as well as increased fertility in the soil. Due to the scale of the damage caused by SCP-6004, survivors began to be housed in safer areas of locations previously attacked by SCP-6004. Temporary power sources became necessary on a large scale, due to the disruption of the power grids with many turning to solar power. During resettlement, many survivors and Foundation staff report a large increase in the population of native wildlife, which did not interfere in resettlement efforts. In late February, the Foundation, the Global Occult Coalition, Marshall Carter and Dark, and a major sect of the Church of the Broken God came to a truce so as to determine a method of control and containment of SCP-6004. A think tank was organized involving various experts from across the aforementioned organizations to try and establish a working theory of the nature of 6004. Each group independently presented noteworthy similarities between 6004 and Australian Aboriginal Dreamtime stories of the Rainbow Serpent. Research into all available folklore and consultation with relevant unaffiliated persons was initiated with the goal to find a ritual or other avenue of interference that could be used in the containment of the entity. Parallel with the think tank, the Foundation and Global Occult Coalition began expedited development of experimental weaponry, designed with assumptions that SCP-6004 shared metaphysical similarities with. This project came to be known as Project Mongoose. Addendum 6004-3 Discoveries of SCP-6004 Attacked After Effects Following the destruction of Sydney, an investigatory unit operating out of Site-40 were deployed to the area in an attempt to gather any information possible about SCP-6004 and its effect on areas attacked by it. As this was the first major city to be destroyed by SCP-6004, it was hoped that some significant information would be discovered. At 3.21 am, Survey Team 40 arrived in northern Sydney and were instructed to head for Rushcutters Bay via the city center, as the destruction was particularly intense in the former region. Survey Team 40 was instructed to document and mark the locations of any notable anomalies that had resulted from SCP-6004 attack, as well as mark survivors' locations with flares or Foundation rescue teams. The following is a video log taken from Captain John Burko's body camera of the resulting events, 
with the relevant sections removed for brevity's sake. Exploration Video Log Transcript Date, April 7, 2020 Exploration Team Survey Team 40 Subject SCP-6004 Team Lead Captain John Burko Team Members Sergeant Brendan Harlow Corporal Erwin Perosis Corporal E. Barahona Begin Log Camera's view shows that Survey Team 40 is traveling on foot through Sydney City Center. Much of the surrounding structures are severely damaged by emerging plant life, particularly large eucalyptus trees, along with signs of massive impact events. There is steady rain, and occasional flashes of lightning. Corporal Perosis can be seen in the lead, using a chainsaw to remove falling timbers from their path. Corporal Barahona stands guard nearby with their weapon aimed at the tree canopy above them. The rest of the team is currently off-camera. We are removing debris from our path, and should be within the area of interest shortly, Command. Captain Perosis saws through a fallen beam, causing most of the debris to slide away. That'll do it. Good work. Keep going, team. Remember, eyes open. Watch the trees for movement and stay away from anything obviously unstable. Yes, Captain. Affirmative. Mm -hmm. The team continues south via the road, often climbing over roots and through vegetation. You see all those koalas, boss? Camera swivels upward, showing eight koalas within the treetops looking down at the team. Well, they definitely weren't living here before. Cute, though. Marking it. Command, we have a large number of koalas here. Couldn't have been here before. Marking the location now. Affirmative. This is consistent with other attack locations. Continue to your destination. Affirmative. Move out, guys. Survey team continues along the route, frequently seeing wildlife. Animals seen universally avoid the team, with the exception of multiple snakes, which raise their heads and watch the team pass. I don't like that. Do we have anti-venom ready, Captain? A dose for each of us. Just stamp your feet as you walk and they'll leave us alone. I swear, I keep seeing something big in the trees. Where? Point it out. Movement! Camera swivels to the direction indicated by Perosis. A large mass can be seen moving behind some vegetation. The team trained their weapons on it, with Perosis taking cover by a car close to the vegetation. Command, unidentified creature has been spotted, going to attempt to flush it out. Be careful. Barahona, toss that stone behind the bushes, see if it runs out. Barahona can be seen nodding, reaching to grab a fragment of concrete, looking to Captain Burko before throwing the stone. There is a dull thud and a deep grunting sound from the bushes as the creature moves towards the team. Shit, I hit it! Into cover, now! Barahona can be seen ducking into cover by a pile of rubble and the camera begins to jolt in time with the sounds of the creature's footsteps. Vegetation is increasingly disturbed as it approaches. Fuck, it sounds huge. Calm yourself, here it comes. A large brown furred quadruped measuring approximately two meters tall emerges from the bushes, snorting and grunting. It stops upon reaching the clearing where the survey team is and looks around at its surroundings. Is that a giant wombat? Command, identification? Do we know what this is? Nothing in our databases. This isn't a known anomaly. Evans here says it looks like reconstructions of a diprotodon, an extinct giant wombat. What the fuck? The diprotodon begins to snort and throws its head in the air aggressively, pawing at the ground, approaching Sergeant Harlow. Harlow aims his weapon at it and begins backing away, while the animal continues to approach him. Buck off! Get back, bucker! Harlow, slowly back away, stop shouting. Barahona, get the trauma kit ready just in case. Sergeant Harlow begins to back away from the Diprotodon, which in turn stops before roaring at him. Sergeant Harlow flinches, but returns to cover. Movement can be seen in the treetops behind him, but is not noticed by the team. After a moment, the Diprotodon snorts and begins eating grass, before returning to the bushes. Everyone alright? I guess. I think the Sarge need new pants. Fuck off. Fine.
Enough. We need to keep moving. I don't want to be here if 6004 comes back. Mm-hmm. So it's making extinct animals too, not just koalas? Looks that way. The team continues towards Rush Cutters Bay, eventually reaching the edge of a large crater formed by SCP-6004 striking at the Earth. Trees and vines can be seen growing visibly larger within the crater, and kangaroos are foraging among the area. Fuck me. How big must that snake be to do this? Berries. Eggheads at 40 says it changes between 400 meters to over a thousand k's long. Jesus. Command. We're going to need to detour around this area. Roger. Be advised, we have detected movement in the trees and buildings above you. Be careful. Fuck. Diprowombats? Diprotodon. Diprotodon. Who cares? Whatever. Quiet. Acknowledge command. Teams, eyes up high. Mm-hmm. Survey Team 40 continues along the lip of the crater, before coming to a ruined apartment block overhanging the edge. A group of large kangaroos approximately 2.5 meters tall are grazing beside it, looking over at the team. Hold up. Go around them. Don't want to piss them off if we don't have to. They're huge! Evans has identified those of Procoptodon Goliath, an extinct short-faced kangaroo. Given their size, I would recommend caution. Thanks. You heard her, team. Steer clear. The team moves to circle around the animals, when Corporal Perosis is seen to swing his weapon and light towards the apartment building. A moderately large animal can be seen emerging from a hole in the wall, with its eyes reflecting the light into the camera. Watch it. Take cover. Weapons ready. Team takes cover and aims weapon towards the animal. It is a brown color with white stripes a robust muscular build, and a large mouth with large teeth. It slowly climbs down the side of the building, towards the Procoptodons, which have turned to face the team. Am I the only one who thinks that looks like that thing up in Canada? Oh shit. Team, Evans here. That's a marsupial lion. Thalacodio carnifex. Powerful predator. Looks like it's hunting the kangaroos. Assuming it works like normal predators, don't bother it and it should leave you alone. Assuming. Team, be ready to fire on the lion. Way ahead of you. Okay, got it. The Thylacolio Carnifex drops from the building to the back of a Procoptodon, grabbing it and biting it around the neck. The other Procoptodons scatter rapidly, fleeing into the trees. The two animals struggle, before the Thylacolio subdues the Procoptodon, removing the head and begins to drag the carcass back up the side of the apartment block. Two smaller thylacodios can be seen at the edge of the hole where the larger instance emerged from, vocalizing loudly. Holy shit! Fuck me! Easy guys, easy! Arlo, cover me while I recover the head. Yes, Captain. Marco approaches the severed Procoptodon head, with the camera repeatedly swiveling to see where the thylacodio went. Verko picks up the head and goes to place it in a containment pouch. Hold on! Is that a tattoo? What? Verko turns the head over and examines it. The words Live, Laugh, Love can be seen tattooed on the brow ridge of the Procoptodon, along with a stylized human skull on the right side of the face. Holy shit! End log. Afterward, following review of the footage, these tattoos were matched to those on John Baring, a tattoo artist whose body was not recovered following SCP-6004's attack on Sydney. It is now believed that all animals emerging in the wake of SCP-6004 attacks are people that have been transfigured into wildlife within SCP-6004 before being regurgitated. Statement from Site Director Alan Tibbles, June 5, 2020 Things haven't gone well. From the total loss of Australia, the discovery that it's eating us and vomiting us up as animals, and the veil of secrecy being annihilated, it's been a bad few months. I know many of you don't believe that we can turn this around, but you're wrong. The Foundation has always managed to tip the scales back to our favor. 
Time and again we have contained the uncontainable, and recontained it when it escaped. We have saved humanity time and again from extinction. We have handled the whims of mad gods and bent the will of world governments. We have restarted the world a time or two. So I say this. We will rebuild what this snake has destroyed. We will find its weakness, and we will lock it away. We will begin again, using anomalous means until we're back on our feet. And when the work is done, we will help the world to forget the horror that we have faced these past few months. But right now the big job is still ahead of us. We are continuing to build upon our weapons and containment experiments. We are learning more every day about SCP-6004, and we are getting closer to the answers we need. I just need you to dig deep, and do our part in bringing this thing down. Yes, it has shrugged off all our efforts thus far, and yes, it is attacking settlements on a near-global scale now. But now the veil is down. We don't have to pull our punches anymore. We can throw all we have at it. We can take what we have learned in this document, forge it into a weapon, and use it to win. Expansion of SCP-6004's Area of Activity In the weeks following the destruction of Sydney, Australia, SCP-6004 went on to not only attack all other major Australian settlements, but extend its range into Asia, Europe, Africa, and Antarctica, where it behaved similarly. While the Foundation and the GOC did make hundreds of attempts to stop, incapacitate, neutralize, or otherwise contain SCP-6004 through various means, it continued to attack settlements with impunity, with the death toll believed to be in the billions including, but not limited to the use of key units, L-guns, High Energy Concentration Orbital Railgun HECOR, and Class Sigma Autocannons. Worldwide, SCP-6004 has now lowered the average global temperature by 0.7 degrees Celsius, replenished glacial and polar ice, and refilled depleted lake and river systems. Much of the world's deforestation has been reversed and dozens of species of wildlife have been declared no longer endangered or extinct. It is estimated that over 40% of human metropolitan areas over 60, pop, have been rendered uninhabitable within SCP-6004's area of effect, and relocation projects have been made a priority. Due to SCP-6004's targeting of dams, coal fire plants, and large cities, Numerous temporary solar power arrays and nuclear power plants have been erected worldwide to cope with power demands, and both the Foundation and the Global Occult Coalition has resorted to anomalous means of food production to aid in the supply of rations to refugees. The handling of governments worldwide has become a priority, as many nations have moved to defend themselves from SCP-6004 militarily. The Global Occult Coalition has volunteered to use its United Nations channels to manage the issue with the focus being on ensuring global government's priority is on the rescue and shelter of citizens rather than the bolstering of military forces, which has thus far proven ineffective at best and provocative at worst. While media suppression was possible in the weeks immediately following the emergence of SCP-6004, albeit extremely difficult, the expanding area subjected to SCP-6004's attacks has made it impossible to conceal the truth from the eyes of the world. As of now, the veil of secrecy is to be considered broken, and no further efforts to conceal the existence or effects of SCP-6004 are being made, as this has been deemed a waste of Foundation resources. It is hoped that the lowered global population may aid in global anesthetization programs in the event that SCP-6004 be successfully contained or neutralized. The following table has been made for the purpose of determining a pattern of behavior in regards to SCP-6004. For the sake of brevity, hundreds of examples have been omitted, with more data to be added as events unfold. Location Description Events Death Toll Notes Canberra, Australia Capital City Direct Attack SCP-6004 landed on the city and rapidly struck at it with its mouth, accompanied by hurricane-force winds and thunderstorms. 197,728 
SCP-6004 appeared to target Parliament House in particular, a trend seen reflected in subsequent attacks on capital cities. Sydney, Australia Coastal City Environmental attack SCP-6004 remained in the clouds, only striking the ground occasionally while tsunamis flooded the city. Severe winds and storms also in effect. 3,129,428 the offices of major mining and oil companies were specifically targeted with physical strikes from SCP-6004, as was the area of Rushcutters Bay, specifically Rio Tinto and BHP. Temperate forests rapidly took hold following the event. Hong Kong, People's Republic of China, PRC, Island City, direct attack following multiple days of severe storms and monsoons. SCP-6004 dropped its tail into the sea and swept multiple massive waves at Hong Kong Island before landing its entire mass between Hong Kong Island and Kowloon. 6,284,300 Despite the thoroughness of the attack, multiple skyscrapers remained standing. ROC Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan, Former Lake, refilled by rainstorms over a period of months. 9. Lightning strikes and flood damage caused most of the Soviet irrigation systems responsible for the drainage of the Aral Sea to be destroyed, allowing water flow to return to pre-Soviet roots. Great Pacific Garbage Patch Garbage Patch A perpetual rainstorm is worn over the area. Plastics and other debris hit by this rain are observed to transform into multiple different forms of marine life, including fish, cetaceans, coral polyps, jellyfish, and… Zero. It is estimated that the garbage patch will have been reduced to a negligible size by 2022. Three Gorges Dam People's Republic of China PRC. People's Republic of China PRC. Direct Attack SCP-6004 directly struck at the dam from the air multiple times, destroying the entire structure. 406,184,000 Following the impact, 37 billion cubic meters of water flood down the Yangtze River, with widespread flooding in the Hubei, Hunong, Yangshui, Anhui, Yangsu, and Zhuzhang provinces. Sashi City, Gesuba Dam, Xicheng, Jingjiang, Wuhan, Nanjing, and Shanghai were all destroyed. Despite multiple drainage attempts prior to the attack, the perpetual thunderstorms to the north of the river caused by SCP-6004 had caused the dam's reservoir to be extremely full. Taichung Power Plant, Taiwan Coal Fire Power Plant Multiple lightning strikes entered the plant, causing a series of steam explosions. Unknown. The precise nature of the rapid lightning strikes suggests that SCP-6004 is able to understand the plant's function by unknown means. Mount Kenya Glaciers Kenya. Glaciers. All eleven glaciers atop Mount Kenya began rapidly expanding at the same time as SCP-6004 awoke. Northey Kraft Gregory Lewis Diamond Darwin Oral Heim Tyndall Caesar and Joseph Zero it is estimated that all glaciers will return to pre-1890 levels by 2030. Mayak Production Association Russia, Nuclear Processing Plant SCP-6004 approached the Mayak facility via the Tekka River before emerging and physically attacking and swallowing multiple structures, including multiple disused nuclear reactors and waste storage tanks. Thunderstorms caused rapid plant growth. Unknown. Following this attack, Foundation investigation has discovered that nuclear contamination in the region has reduced drastically. Sahel Region North Africa Ecozone Long periods of rainstorms worn over the entire region, triggering anomalously rapid plant growth and soil revitalization. SCP-6004 directly struck several communities, swallowing and transfiguring the inhabitants into wildlife. 993,000 An area of 650,000 km2 
that had previously been seriously affected by desertification reverted to semi-tropical forests and bushlands. Lake Chad was seen to be greatly replenished. Congo Basin, Central Africa Tropical Rainforest, River System Widespread reforestation as a result of SCP-6000 board rainstorms. Multiple settlements within the area previously within forest boundaries were attacked, and the occupants transfigured into endangered wildlife. 48,500,000 An area 148,460 km squared has been converted to rainforest in the Democratic Republic of the Congo alone. Numerous endangered and previously extinct animals have been reported to be inhabiting the area in large numbers. Eastern Australian Temperate Forest Grazing Lands, Australia Former Forest Grazing Lands SCP-6004 directly attacked grazing lands over a period of several weeks, consuming over 70 million livestock animals before rainstorms transformed the growth of native flora in the form of temperate forest. 300,000 Wildlife regurgitated by SCP-6004 in this area has primarily been previously extinct animals and has drastically changed the local environment. The presence of numerous specimens of carnivorous megafauna in the area has rendered the area unlikely to be resettled in the future. Antarctica Pole SCP-6004 flew over much of Antarctica, causing increased snowfall and causing increased auroras over the southern pole. Increased snowfall resulted in the reformation of approximately 3 trillion tons of ice. Zero. SCP-6004 was seen to circle Mount Sidley for 19 days. The reason for this is currently unknown, despite Foundation investigation. Benguela Belize Lobito Tomboko Oil Platform Republic of Angola Offshore Oil Platform SCP-6004 directly attacked the platform from below the surface of the sea physically pulling it beneath the surface, and repeatedly slamming it into the sea floor. Structure remnants rapidly converted to coral reef over the following months. 17. It is theorized that the immense pressure generated by SCP-6004's body mass crushing the station has effectively plugged the oil well. Octiti Mine Papua New Guinea Open Pit Mine Rainstorms born over the mine pit and surrounding areas but did not cause plant growth, instead detoxifying soil contaminated by mining waste. SCP-6004 approaches the mine via the Fly River and later the Octiti River, swallowing much of the contaminated riverbed. SCP-6004 then emerged and proceeded to fill in the mine with surrounding earth before departing. 13,273 Rainforest regrew in the area following the attack. Pollution levels in the Octiti and Fly Rivers has dropped to nearly zero. Malagrata Landfill, Italy Landfill Thunderstorms appeared over the landfill, with the rains converting much of the waste into fungus, trees, and insects. Zero. A large portion of the waste was converted into wasps and bees, resulting in vastly increased natural pollination. Ganges River, India River SCP-6004 physically entered the Ganges Delta via the Bay of Bengal, attacking numerous settlements before swimming up the river at low speed over the course of 24 days. It was observed to have its mouth open, with its lower jaw scraping the riverbed and swallowing it, with its entire mass filling the river. SCP-6004 repeatedly attacked structures and settlements on the banks of the river. Multiple dams were destroyed and millions of people were consumed. Notably, SCP-6004 did not harm the Ganga Mahasava during this attack. An organization dedicated to the conservation and cleaning of the Ganges River, who were in the process of a tiger conservation operation at the time. 250,500,000 Military forces repeatedly attempted to intercept and attack SCP-6004, but were either ignored or crushed by SCP-6004. Following its departure, the Ganges River was found to be clean and heavily populated by fish and dolphins. Tanzania Wilderness Tanzania Wilderness 
Rainfall over the area was reported similar to other areas affected by SCP-6004, but induced changes in local wildlife. Animals killed by human activity, such as poaching and trophy hunting, were observed to recover, in some cases multiple times. Unknown, estimated between 300 to 19,000. Following wildlife recovery, massively increased aggression towards humans has been observed, with numerous reports of lions, leopards, hyenas, and elephant attacks occurring daily. Himalayan Mountain Range, Asia River Glacial expansion coinciding with the awakening of SCP-6004. Rainfall rapidly reintroduced forests to areas affected by deforestation, and multiple settlements converted to wildlife with similar aggression and regenerative abilities seen in Tanzania, Siberia, and the Ganges. 28 million Numerous reports of SCP-1000 sightings in the region have been reported following attacks by SCP-6004. Tana Mera Palm Oil Project, Indonesia Palm Oil Plantation Thunderstorms formed over the entire region occupied by the Tana Mera Project, as well as numerous other palm oil plantations, causing native vegetation to rapidly grow in an area exceeding 280,000 hectares. Native vegetation grown in this way was seen actively strangling introduced oil palms. SCP-6004 was observed to strike at workers on these plantations from the air, consuming them. 4800 These areas were frequently revisited by SCP-6004 for the purpose of regurgitating consumed individuals in the form of native wildlife. Incident 6004 Beijing Forward Following the destruction of the Three Gorges Dam, Foundation plants within the Chinese government reported significant unrest within the party. There was immediate mobilization of military assets not affected by the floods, under the name of preparedness. Despite attempted Foundation intervention, much of China's military resources were relocated to Beijing, including at least 80 nuclear weapons. Multiple attempts were made by both Foundation and Global Occult Coalition diplomats to discourage the CCP from antagonizing or engaging SCP-6004, citing the failure of India's military during the Ganges attacks and potential fallout, but failed to make progress and were eventually barred from discussions with the Chinese government. Multiple plants remained within the party and continued to relay information to the Foundation GOC Alliance. Rather than use further resources attempting to negotiate with China, it was determined that the Foundation would continue to prioritize the attempted containment of SCP-6004 and the development of Project Mongoose. At 4.23 pm, the October 27, 2020 Foundation satellites detected SCP-6004 with airborne and approaching the Jinjiji -Ji metropolitan region. Shortly afterwards, Site-40 received the following message from Agent Zhou Wei, who was embedded within the government. The Intelligence Bureau has spotted SCP-6004 approaching Beijing, and a state of emergency has been declared. The party is in a state of panic. The military is on high alert, and officials are talking about nuclear weapons. Please advise. Agent Zhou Wei was advised to attempt to discourage the use of nuclear weapons, and it was decided that an early prototype for Project Mongoose be diverted to the South China Sea via the SCPS Indominus, an attempt to incapacitate SCP-6004 before it could arrive in the Jinjiji metropolitan region. A high-speed heavy weaponry vessel designed to aid in a rapid response to high-threat entities. It was theorized that despite operating at 37% of the capacity of the projected output of the finished weapon, the prototype would be able to induce unconsciousness or a sleep state within SCP-6004. Recovered military footage Camera feed shows a battalion of soldiers ready to attack outside the city of Lhasa. Multiple artillery and rocket launch platforms can be seen, and it is raining heavily. Lightning frequently illuminates the scene. SCP-6004 can be seen approaching from the southwest within the cloud cover approximately 8 km away. A sergeant can be seen in the foreground on a radio, requesting for Air Force support. SCP-6004's head dips below the clouds as it approaches. It visibly shifts appearance to resemble different species of ophidians simultaneously. 
it roars loudly. Multiple rocket platforms appear to be readied. The sergeant gestures to several soldiers and points at SCP-6004, which is rapidly approaching. Multiple gunships enter frame, approaching SCP-6004 and opening fire. SCP-6004 does not react, and continues northeast. A gunship is forced to take evasive action, as a coil of SCP-6004's body emerges from cloud cover. SCP-6004's motion causes it to collide with the gunship, which detonates. An order to fire can be heard from the sergeant's radio. Eighteen ballistic missiles are seen being launched from the ground, entering the cloud cover, detonating above the clouds. Multiple soldiers can be seen staring at the clouds. Some can be heard asking one another if SCP-6004 has been killed. SCP-6004 emerges from the clouds at high speed, roaring and continuing northeast. Multiple lightning strikes hit the area, with most of the soldiers being killed instantly. Task forces operating at a multiple Chinese Foundation sites were mobilized, to aid in the evacuation of civilians across the projected path of SCP-6004. As the evacuations were carried out, numerous Chinese Air Force combatants were dispatched to attack SCP-6004. Multiple eyewitness accounts reported SCP-6004 largely ignoring these attacks. SCP-6004 continued heading northeast towards Beijing with widespread thunderstorms and anomalous plant growth following in its wake. Foundation and GOC forces began treatment and organization of evacuated civilians within various staging areas throughout China. Task Force 341, tasked with aiding in the evacuation of Beijing, was halted by armed forces on the outskirts of the Jingjingji metropolitan region and ordered to exit the area. Despite multiple attempts at diplomacy, Task Force 341 was forced to withdraw. Upon exiting the area, they sent the following communication to Site-40. Evacuation of Beijing is impossible. The military has locked down the city on the orders of the General Secretary, and has declared the Foundation to be enemies of the state. Advise all Foundation activity within Chinese borders to be carried out with caution. At this time, the SCPS and Dominus was approximately 40 minutes from being in range of SCP-6004. Multiple reports of military attacks on Foundation and GOC forces began to reach Site-40, and it was decided that all task forces were to withdraw. The decision was met with resistance, but was carried out. At 5.03 pm, all Foundation activity within Northeast China had ceased, with all forces returning to their home sites with minimal losses. Satellite monitoring and local surveillance cameras showed SCP-6004 continuing to approach Beijing in spite of increasingly thick resistance from the military. At 5.09 pm, the following communication was received from Agent Zhou Wei. They're going to launch nuclear weapons. I can't stop them. Following this communication, the SCPS Indominus were ordered to fire the Mongoose prototype as soon as possible. The Indominus replied in the affirmative, estimating that they would be in range in 12 minutes. Video Log Incident 6004 Date October 27, 2020 Note, At 5.14 pm, SCP-6004 reached the outskirts of the Jingjingji metropolitan region. The following events were recorded by numerous Foundation and civilian cameras and satellites. Begin Log 5.14 pm Air raid sirens sound out over the cities and civilians remaining on the streets can be seen fleeing indoors. A very large storm front can be seen approaching from the southwest, with SCP-6004 within it. Multiple military aircraft are engaging it to no effect. 5.14 pm, thunderstorms rapidly form over the entire region. Heavy rain begins to fall, and large masses of vegetation form from the ground and architecture of the cities, causing massive structural damages. Numerous lightning bolts repeatedly strike multiple skyscrapers. 5.14 pm, Site-40 Command relays SCP-6004 the rival to the SCPS Indominus. The Indominus continues its approach. 5.15 pm, SCP-6004 coils above the city of Baoding and observes the city. Lightning strikes cease. 5.16 pm, SCP-6004 strikes at Baoding 
destroying seven skyscrapers. It rises before hitting the ground, and proceeds to scrape the ground with its mouth, forcing numerous vehicles and structures down its throat. Multiple CCTV cameras show civilians falling into the throat, which does not appear different to that of non-anomalous snakes. 5.17 PM SCP-6004 fully reaches the ground, and proceeds to slowly circle the city, moving in an inward spiral as it swallows terrain and buildings. Some buildings are spared, with CCTV footage showing SCP-6004 passing through them harmlessly. 5.17 PM Military aircraft began bombing runs on SCP-6004. Multiple bombs detonate on its back with no effect. One aircraft is seen to deliberately ram the eye of SCP-6004, detonating violently. SCP-6004 fails to notice and continues the consumption of Baoding. 5.18 PM Multiple tornadoes and lightning bolts strike multiple sites within the Jingjingji metropolitan region, continuing along paths throughout the area, targeting skyscrapers in particular. 5.19 PM SCP-6004 finishes consuming Baoding and rears its head into the air, ignoring the efforts of the Air Force. It turns to face Beijing before pushing off the remains of Baoding and rapidly approaching the city. 5.20 PM Air Force retreats from SCP-6004 in Beijing. The SCPS Indominus reports it will be in range of SCP-6004 in 70 seconds. 5.20 PM Numerous sirens sound within Beijing as SCP-6004 approaches, and a recording of China's head of state plays over citywide loudspeakers, stating the following, Better for Beijing to fall than for all of China to be overrun. 5.21 PM SCP-S Indominus reports to Site-40 Command that SCP-6004 is now within range of the Mongoose prototype, and requests permission to fire. 5.21 PM Multiple simultaneous launches are detected from within China. Satellite imaging identifies these launches as being 12 nuclear warheads. 5.21 PM Tornadoes and lightning strikes continue to ravage the area, with large masses of vegetation forming over the ruins. 5.22 PM Twelve nuclear warheads simultaneously strike SCP-6004 on separate lengths of its body and head, 43 kilometers southwest from Beijing. The resulting blasts are estimated to have yields ranging from 5 to 16 megatons, causing SCP-6004 to recoil. Multiple windows within a 68km radius shatter. 5.22 PM SCP-S Indominus reports sighting of a flash of light from the direction of Beijing. Rainfall, tornadoes and lightning strikes cease in the area, and the upper portion of SCP-6004 is obscured by mushroom clouds. 5.22 PM O5 Command orders the SCPS Indominus to charge the Mongoose prototype. Onboard cameras show the barrels of the Mongoose aimed towards SCP-6004, and the device begins to emit green light and high-pitched wailing vocalizations. 5.23 PM SCP-6004 roars and rears above Beijing. Its head and much of its body is aflame, but does not display any sign of damage or burning. SCP-6004 roars again and tosses its head violently extinguishing the flames, before turning towards Beijing and bodily flinging itself at the city, while roaring and emitting multicolored bolts of electricity at the capital, causing catastrophic damage. Thunderstorms, tornadoes, and winds in excess of 450 km per hour spontaneously form over the area, causing significant damage. 5.23 PM SCP-6004 strikes to the ground repeatedly and thrashes its tail across the region, leaving multiple large craters. SCP-S Indominus reports that the Mongoose prototype will be ready to fire shortly. 5.24 PM Air Force fighter jets return and engages SCP-6004, with multiple aircraft deliberately colliding with it. SCP-6004 continues to strike the Earth, with numerous lightning bolts impacting the aircraft. Lava begins to emerge from multiple craters as a result of SCP-6004 strikes. 5.24 PM Project Mongoose technicians aboard the SCP-S Indominus begin the firing sequence. 
The prototype begins wailing more intensely and emitting flashes of dark green light. 5.25 PM The last remaining aircraft retreat from SCP-6004 5.28 PM SCP-6004 ceases striking at the ground and surveys the area. Tornadoes and lightning storms dissipate, and vegetation begins to form in areas unaffected by the emergence of lava. The entirety of Beijing and the surrounding area has been entirely demolished, with no structures surviving. SCP-6004 begins to roar and vocalize repeatedly. 5.28 PM Project Mongoose technicians report that the prototype is ready to be fired. O5 Command grants permission to fire. 5.25 PM Project Mongoose fires once the entity's coordinates are confirmed. Crew of SCPS and Dominus lost upon activation. A large sustained beam comprised of fires from Project Mongoose, accompanied by an intense screaming sound. Satellite visuals are lost as a result of the weapons firing. 5.30 PM A fault occurs within the Mongoose prototype, causing an energy failure and cessation of fire and vocalization. 5.30 PM Satellite visuals are regained as weapons vocalization cease. Entity appears to have taken notice of the beam. 5.31 PM SCP-6004 rapidly propels itself into the cloud cover, visibly tracking the mongoose beam as it passes and impacts the Jundu Mountains, destroying approximately 32 km squared. 5.32 PM The entity emits a low vocalization and approaches the SCPS Indominus, entering the South China Sea and raising its head out of the water to inspect the Project Mongoose prototype for the following four minutes before submerging itself beneath the surface and leaving the area. End log. Following the departure of SCP-6004 from the area, no search and rescue operations were carried out in the Jingjingji metropolitan region. The death toll from this incident has been estimated as being in excess of 140 million. Investigation to the former site of Beijing showed the formation of three fault lines, previously undiscovered species of flora and fauna, and masses of human remains. SCP-6004 was tracked to the Pacific Ocean before being lost in deep waters. After a period of several hours, it was deemed to be safe for the SCPS Indominus and Project Mongoose prototype to be recovered by the Foundation, with further research and development to be carried out. Project Mongoose An Overview Forward Following the emergence of SCP-6004, multiple attempts at containment were made. Conventional means were quickly proven useless, and shortly afterwards so were even high-level Foundation devices. Hecor bounced off of its hide, Class Sigma autocannon fire passed through it, Scranton Reality Anchor derived devices had no effect. The key units that proved so effective against LSAs were at best bulldozed, and at worst totally ignored. In short, the Foundation needed a new weapon, whether it would allow for SCP-6004's containment or its neutralization was deemed irrelevant. To this end, the Foundation reached out to the Global Occult Coalition, whose prowess at killing anomalous entities were famed, feared, and even hated throughout the anomalous community. Given the highly visible nature of SCP-6004, the GOC was already aware of the entity and were already working towards its neutralization. They were receptive towards collaboration, and development soon began at both Site-19 and the GOC Advanced Weaponry Facility in Colorado, USA. Numerous resources were used, both mundane and anomalous. As SCP-6004 began to move over larger portions of the globe, development became increasingly desperate. Both Marshall Carter and Dark and Church of the Broken God assets were recruited and used in the construction of the device, in addition to the combined resources of the GOC and the Foundation. This collaboration led to what has become known as Project Mongoose, a long-range charged particle emitter that draws on thaumaturgical and reverse siphoned human energies to produce a devastating directed blast. 
It was agreed that the GOC would manufacture the charged particle emitter, while the Foundation would manufacture the barrel and focusing rings necessary to amplify and control the beam. Specialists from the Church of the Broken God aided both parties in the construction of these elements. Each site produced a smaller prototype for the purpose of testing, with one of these prototypes being fired at SCP-6004 during Incident 6004 Beijing. As of November 23, 2020, SCP-6004 has expanded its area of operation to encompass the entire globe. Multiple attacks within the Americas are being reported daily, and Project Mongoose has been completed. Due to the prototype's charge sequence causing the annihilation of all lifeworms within a 444-meter radius of it, all components have been fitted mounted aboard a GOC-class Lincoln satellite and launched into orbit from which it will be fired remotely. Due to the immense energy requirements and complex reactions, Orbital Project Mongoose requires 444 seconds to fire after the location has been locked. As such, it is now the Foundation's responsibility to fire Orbital Project Mongoose at SCP-6004 when an opportunity arises, with all efforts being made to create such a window of opportunity. SCP-6004 Global Behavior Patterns Following Incident 6004 Beijing, SCP-6004 was not seen for a period of nine days, remaining submerged in the world's oceans. An overall improvement in the health of coral reefs was detected, and numerous vessels were lost at sea in hurricanes and squalls. At this time, remaining governments have taken shelter in subterranean bunkers, and a joint effort between the Foundation and the GOC has been working toward relocating and safely housing survivors of attacks by the entity with both organizations producing food, medicine, and power via anomalous means. During this time, SCP-6004 was detected beneath the Arctic ice pack. Pack ice could be seen thickening and expanding with the naked eye, returning to pre-1948 levels within two days. It then proceeded to circle an area slightly outside the Arctic Circle and portions of northern Siberia, Canada, and Alaska consuming large numbers of livestock and humans. Reports of flora and fauna lost during a coordinary extinction event appearing within these areas were proven correct through multiple satellite images. Glaciation rates in this area increased to a large degree, in some cases expanding over towns at a subterranean foundation site. Despite multiple attempts to target SCP-6004 with Orbital Project Mongoose, the entity proved too mobile for a lock to be made. SCP-6004 then shifted its focus to the Americas, causing widespread rainstorms, plant growth, and reintroduction of endangered and extinct species coincided with mass disappearances of civilian populations within densely populated cities throughout much of South America, with a particularly large portion of time and activity centered on the Amazon rainforest. The entity was observed to move over much of the Americas, changing directions seemingly at random but following the established pattern of targeting large urban centers and environmentally damaging installations. Of note, the entity was first seen in the United States of America when it attacked Washington D Of note, the entity was first seen in the United States of America when it attacked Washington DC via the Potomac River. It was observed to actively engage with military forces by roaring and vocalizing at them before striking them with lightning. The attack took place over a 40-minute period, where it proceeded to consume large portions of the city. Attempts to evacuate the U.S. President and staff failed when the Presidential Emergency Operations Center was flooded when SCP-6004 caused the Potomac River to flood much of the city ruins. A secure bunker constructed beneath the east wing of the White House, designed to allow the President of the United States to safely govern during periods of crisis. SCP-6004 continued in this fashion over much of the United States, Mexico, and Canada, striking particularly hard at large cities such as Toronto, Los Angeles, Mexico City, New York City, Ottawa, and La Paz. Enormous stretches of land were converted to forest by anomalous rainfall generated by SCP-6004, with large number of people and animals being consumed and regurgitated by the entity approximately 43% of the United States. Of note, 
disruption to the United States power grid by SCP-6004 triggered the cascade failures of numerous nuclear power plants, necessitating Foundation and GOC intervention to prevent multiple nuclear meltdowns from occurring. Foundation historians and archaeologists have conducted extensive research into Australian Aboriginal mythology, particularly in regards to the Rainbow Serpent. It is now believed that oral Dreamtime stories passed down over millennia refer to confrontations with SCP-6004, and that the entity has attacked humanity before. These attacks have been preceded by periods of environmental instability, and were often resolved by various rituals, abandonment of environmentally damaging practices, or in some cases by guardian spirits engaging the Rainbow Serpent in battle. Typically animal totems such as the Gona or Crocodile. Should Project Mongoose fail, the Foundation must consider influencing a significant shift in the way in which modern civilization functions so as not to draw the attention of SCP-6004 until containment becomes possible. The prospect of seeking out one of these protector spirits to intervene on behalf of the Foundation is also being considered. With the Gona Dirawang being seen as an ideal candidate, at this date, SCP-6004's range is to be considered global. Foundation and GOC political ambassadors are encouraging world governments to limit military activity and to move their populations outside of urban areas. Areas not targeted by SCP-6004 have been prioritized as temporary resettlement locations, and efforts are being made to safely provide housing for the world's population without drawing the attention of SCP-6004. Activation of Project Mongoose After a period of 49 days of activity over the Americas with no opportunity to activate orbital Project Mongoose, SCP-6004 began displaying interest in numerous Foundation and GOC facilities. The entity would often circle sites, but not approach for unknown reasons. It was during one of these events, on the December 24, 2020 that SCP-6004 began examining Global Occult Coalition Advanced Weaponry Facility, one of the two locations where Project Mongoose was developed. At 4.37 pm, SCP-6004 began to investigate the Advanced Weapons Facility, exhibiting signs of agitation. Satellite imaging showed the facility enter a lockdown, with multiple weapons platforms being activated, including the GOC-operated Mongoose prototype. It was at this time that the O5 Council voted 8-5 to fire Orbital Project Mongoose upon both SCP-6004 and the Advanced Weapons Facility. The following is a log of the ensuing events. Video Log Date December 24, 2020 Note, The following events were captured via satellite imagery aboard various Foundation monitoring satellites as well as cameras mounted aboard the Orbital Project Mongoose satellite platform. Begin Log 4.38 PM SCP-6004 can be seen circling the GOC Advanced Weapons Facility AWF, on the ground, appearing increasingly agitated. The AWF has initiated a lockdown, with multiple weapons platforms tracking the entity. Of note is a Project Mongoose prototype which appears to be charged and ready to fire. 4.38 PM Orbital Project Mongoose is activated and begins its charging sequence. Guidance rails and focusing rings can be seen moving into position as the barrel system aims at both the AWF and SCP-6004. Green light and wailing vocalizations begin emitting from the devices, causing numerous visual glitches and illusions to appear on footage acquired from onboard cameras. A full log of these errors can be seen in Document 6004 Mongoose Illusions. GOC access to Orbital Project Mongoose is blocked. 4.39 PM The GOC attempts to contact Site-19, but are ignored. Multiple attempts to access Project Mongoose are detected and blocked. Diplomatic ambassadors are sent to meeting sites to ensure GOC cooperation. 4.39 PM SCP-6004 vocalizes loudly and continues circling the site, seeming to direct the vocalization at the AWF. 4.40 PM 
Movement from SCP-6004 causes a portion of the AWS exterior to separate from the surrounding mountainside, resulting in unidentified weapons platform mounted to this region to fire prematurely. The projectile impacts SCP-6004's tail and detonates violently, but causes no damage to the entity. 4.40 PM SCP-6004 ceases vocalizing at the AWF for a moment before roaring and coiling back into a striking position. Multiple weapons platforms begin firing at the entity, and numerous shielding devices can be seen activating. Wind speeds immediately increase drastically, and rainstorms spontaneously generate. 4.41 PM Orbital Project Mongoose begins emitting pulses of energy as it enters its criticality stage. 4.41 PM SCP-6004 strikes at the AWF, destroying a large portion of the mountainside which the site is housed in. The AWF Mongoose prototype fires at SCP-6004 with a sustained beam following the entity's movements. The beam can be seen visibly irritating SCP-6004's skin on contact, and causes it to recoil and begin dodging the beam, vocalizing loudly and staring at the prototype. 4.42 PM Multiple energy pulses are seen emitting from the AWS Mongoose prototype, annihilating all vegetation within 200 meters of the weapon. Multiple lightning bolts strike at the site, but are redirected by GOC shield generators. SCP-6004 attempts to fling large portions of earth and rock towards the Mongoose prototype with its tail, but is unsuccessful due to the site's shielding system. SCP-6004 continues to move evasively. 4.43 PM Following several seconds of uninterrupted impact from the Mongoose prototype, SCP-6004 roars and emits a stream of multicolored energy from its mouth towards the prototype, causing it to miss fire and re-enter a charging phase. SCP-6004 proceeds to wrap around the mountain and strike down at the Mongoose prototype, resulting in a massive energy discharge. This discharge is largely negated by the remaining shield devices. 4.43 PM Orbital Project Mongoose readies to fire. 4.44 PM SCP-6004 continues to strike down to AWF, breaching the top of the facility. GOC operators can be seen within attempting to evacuate the facility, with some directing small arms fire at the entity. SCP-6004 roars and rears back in preparation for another strike. 4.44 PM Orbital Project Mongoose fires a sustained beam, with resultant vocalizations being heard by surrounding satellites and in a 44km radius of the AWF. Reported as sounding like a metallic scream, SCP-6004 raises its head towards the source of the noise and is engulfed in the beam along with the AWF. The beam's impact annihilates the AWF, with the weapon's energy flood and negative Hume field disintegrating all life forms within a 444km radius. 4.47 PM Orbital Project Mongoose ceases firing on the orders of the O5 Council. The GOC, AWF, and surrounding mountains have been completely destroyed, with a large crater having been formed by the beam's impact. SCP-6004 can be seen within the crater and surrounding areas of devastation, displaying moderate burns over much of its body. 4.47 PM SCP-6004 rises from the ground and roars, thrashing its head and tail as lightning emits from multiple points on its body, and the burns to its scales heal rapidly. Rainfall and wind speed intensifies, and the entity begins to rapidly expand and coil around itself looking upwards. Visual contact is lost as storm clouds thicken. The O5 Council orders Orbital Project Mongoose to fire again. 4.47 PM Orbital Project Mongoose fires a second sustained beam at SCP-6004, clearing much of the generated storm clouds. SCP-6004 can be seen struggling against a beam and coiling on the ground before rapidly launching itself upwards. 4.48 PM SCP-6004's head approaches Orbital Project Mongoose. Firing ceases automatically as proximity sensors detect an imminent collision with the entity. 
SCP-6004 proceeds to grab the Project Mongoose satellite platform within its mouth, causing catastrophic damage to the Mongoose, before falling back down to the upper troposphere and rapidly approaching Site-19. Following the failure of Project Mongoose, all contact with Site-19 was lost. Later assessment discovered that the upper levels of the site had suffered catastrophic damage. In keeping with SCP-6004's pattern of devastation, the upper six levels had collapsed and been strangled by extremely robust vegetation. A majority of the structure's upper floors had been displaced, with the remains of Project Mongoose largely annihilated. Multiple safe and Euclid-class SCP objects had breached containment, being either destroyed in the event or still currently missing. The lower levels of the site remain uncompromised. Rescue efforts following the attack were able to evacuate percent of surviving staff. The following statement was provided by Site Technician Wagner. I, uh, I was working on a broken fast access cart down in Euclid Block. All the lights went red and the alarms were going off, so I rolled out from underneath and started running to the shelters. You know, pretty standard stuff. I thought it was a containment breach, yeah? Then the banging and the explosion started. It felt like an earthquake. Everything was shaking. You could hear the upper levels caving in, even. I was so busy looking at the supports, I didn't watch my feet, and I fell. Got trampled pretty bad. The bulkhead shut before I could get into the shelter and I was fucked. I ran down to the workshop. There was an LSA attack vehicle there with ship brakes. I jumped in, held my hands over my ears and watched the security feed before it went down. It felt like I was watching the end of the world. That fucking snake had crushed a whole eastern compound, thrown a satellite or some shit into the admin ward. All the guns and missiles were unloading on it, and it was like trying to put out a wildfire with a water balloon. I saw it scream on the video. I heard it all the way down. Twenty-three. Twenty-four floors down. Ruptured both of my eardrums. Then it started blasting us with that rainbow lightning. The feed cut out and the roof collapsed. Water started pouring in and I thought I was going to drown. I'm glad it started draining down to one of the lower levels. I could hear the people in the bunker screaming. Something had gotten in there with them. I don't want to know what. Then, just like that, there was another quake, and it had gone. MTS rolled in not long after, rescued those of us who'd survived, got started on getting the skips back in their cells. Heard a lot of the D-Class guys help with the rescuing. I'm just glad I didn't try and dig down to the rest of the site. Following rescue and evacuation efforts, it was determined through witness interviews that SCP-6004 had attacked Site-19 largely through the use of the same energy seen in Beijing and the GOC AWF, throwing orbital Project Mongoose at the site's administration wing, and by physically landing on the eastern compound before striking at the main site. This was confirmed by the recovery of the Guardian AI log, which documented the AI's attempt to defend the site from SCP-6004. An automated defensive AI programmed to autonomously operate site-wide defense systems. Addendum 6004-5 Recovered Guardian AI Log Threat Detected SCP-6004 Approaching Site Arrival Imminent Secondary Threat Detected Project Mongoose Weapons Platform Damaged Site Destruction Probability 96% Defenses Engaged Shield Strength 100%. Ammunition reserves, 98%. Distress signal, engaged. Alert sounded. Projected staff survival rate, 23%. Containment wing sealed. Target systems locked. Firing. All weapon systems firing. Imminent attack detected. SCP-6004. Electrical projectile attack. Shield strength, 0%. Shields offline. Estimated casualties: 18,000. Impact detection: East Wing. Estimated casualties: 48,000. Structures damaged: Transport Depot, Staff Barracks, Cafeteria, East Wing Scientific Development, East Wing Armory. Threat detected: Project Mongoose Weapons Platform damaged. 
launched via SCP-6004 Projected Impact Surface Administrative Building Weapons System Engaged Threat Negative. Risk of triggering Project Mongoose Energy Pulse Threat Detected Flash Flooding Entering Site Impact Detection Surface Administrative Building Estimated Casualties 51,000 Structures Damaged Surface Administrative Building Impact Detection SCP-6004 Electrical Projectile Attack Affected Area of Sight Surface 87% Affected Area of Sight Subterranean 39% Weapons System Offline Safe Class Containment Wing Compromised Euclid Class Containment Wing Partially Compromised Keter Class Containment Wing Uncompromised Threat Detected Imminent Physical Strike from SCP-6004 upon Main Structure Reserve Power Redirection Kinetic Shields Kinetic Shield Power 493% Impact Detected Central Containment Structure Kinetic Shields Offline Structures Damaged Levels Negative 26 through 19 Safe Class Containment Wing Euclid Class Containment Wing Keter Class Containment Wing Research Wing 000 through 263 Engineering Wing 000 through 96 Estimated Casualties 273,000 Threat Detected Multiple Containment Breaches SCP Objects Breached SCP-173 SCP-939 SCP-131 SCP-312 SCP-058 Threat Detected Flooding of Lower Levels Threat Detected Loss of Power to Guardian AI Mainframe Estimated Remaining Operational Time 28 Seconds Redirecting Power Recontainment and Security Systems Estimated Remaining Operational Time 19 Seconds Containment Wings Sealed Personnel Shelters Active Estimated Remaining Operational Time 12 Seconds Drainage Systems Activated Threat Departure SCP-6004 Exiting Area Estimated Remaining Operational Time 4 Seconds Auxiliary Guardian AI Power Rerouting to Auto Doctor Stations Guardian AI Goodbye Friends Be Safe Power Lost A word from Director Alan Tibbles, January 15, 2021 These have been some very hard months. Entire cities were annihilated. Countries damn near depopulated. Sites lost. Anomalies escaped. Truces made and broken. Friends, family and loved ones we'll never see again were killed or turned into animals. The bale's gone. The Foundation resources have been drained on a failed project and the world as we know it is pretty much over. But so are the attacks. SCP-6004 has revisited the site of its awakening. It hasn't hit a single city in weeks, and rain has stopped making forests. There is hope now, light at the end of the tunnel. This thing is going to sleep. We have excellent leads on how to keep it that way, and we will ensure it never wakes up again. We have a lot of work to do, a new world to make towns, cities, and sites to rebuild. New facilities to build, full of new means of production for food and materials. Billions of people to amnesticize. History books to rewrite, and effectively a whole new world to create. Luckily, it isn't the first time we've done this, and likely not the last. We can do this. You can do this. It will likely be the hardest thing you will do for us, but I promise you, it will be worth it. Site-40 Director Alan Tibbles Proposed Revisions to SCP-6004 Containment Procedures Following the discovery of the core nature of SCP-6004 through Aboriginal rock art, extensive research into the history of SCP-6004, 
interviews with various communities, and the observed behavior of the entity throughout its period of activity. It has been determined that SCP-6004 is able to be contained through a rigorous and intensive reordering of global human development and practices, including the Serpent's Hand, Mana Charitable Foundation, and SCP-1000 instances. Along with the development of tools capable of inducing sleep in entities of similar scope to SCP-6004, the Foundation must influence human civilization in such a way as to encourage a lack of outward expansion in the wilderness areas, increased adoption of clean energy such as solar, wind and nuclear power sources, and reduced reliance on unsustainable farming. In an effort to maintain societal progression, the Foundation and other organizations such as the Global Occult Coalition will be required to anomalously produce livestock, construction materials, and other amenities to reduce land usage. Cities and townships will be encouraged to advance via subterranean and vertical expansion, and total expansion into wilderness areas to be determined on a case-by-case -case basis, but overall limited to below 30%. Current Foundation efforts towards the rebuilding of settlements Rehousing of refugees and re-establishing power to affected areas have already lent themselves to these efforts. Areas not targeted by SCP-6004 were naturally selected to house refugees, and at no point did the entity attack solar or wind farms, leading to more widespread use out of convenience. It is believed that these sites and power sources will be ideal launching pads for the implementation of these proposed containment measures and numerous locations suitable for the development of further cities, towns, and Foundation complexes have already been identified. These measures are extreme and will require the cooperation of both world governments and groups of interest, but in the face of SCP-6004 returning, they are warranted until such a time as the Foundation is able to fully contain the entity. Reduction in SCP-6004 Hostility Post-2001 Behavior of SCP-6004 by Dr. Kate Lloyd Abstract Since the conclusion of 2021, SCP-6004 has displayed significantly less aggressive tendencies when compared to earlier behaviors. It is hypothesized that this is due to two main contributing factors, that the revised containment procedures have appeased the entity, and that it has essentially achieved the majority of its goals following its awakening. Each of these factors are evidenced by several observations and statements. Based on these factors and SCP-6004's continued behavior, it is projected that the entity will soon return to a sleep state. Effectiveness of Revised Containment Procedures Towards the end of 2021, the Foundation implemented revised containment procedures designed to appease SCP-6004, based on Australian Aboriginal Dreamtime lore. Since the implementation of these new procedures, SCP-6004 has been significantly calmer, having been observed ignoring multiple Foundation rebuilding efforts, not attacking a single human settlement, and appearing non-hostile during this time. The following examples point towards this behavior being the result of these revised containment procedures. On the January 19, 2022, SCP-6004 arrived at Site-40 via the coast raised its head from the sea, and observed the site for a period of six minutes. This event was witnessed by Corporal Erwin Perosis of Survey Team 40, who was participating in a training exercise at the time. When asked for a summary of the event, he stated the following, I was holding up a log from my team when it came, raised up out of the sea. The whole time it was staring at the building, like it was looking at it before it even came up. Everyone was scared. We'd heard about 19 and that GOC base, thought it was here to do the same. But it didn't do anything. It just stared at us. The base first, the power systems building, us training, the director out on the observation deck, the shitload of guns pointing at it, everything, just taking it all in. It felt like we were being judged, you know. You could feel it even more than you could see it. Then after a minute, it flicked out its tongue turned around, and swam away. In addition to the above, SCP-6004 has been observed spending a great deal of time at the area formerly housing the GOC's Advanced Weapons Facility. 
Despite multiple attempts to dig out lake beds and river sites, the rains generated by the entity have failed to produce lakes, rivers, or trigger plant growths as seen in other areas, with wildlife regurgitated by the entity all expiring within hours of placement. Previous models of SCP-6004's behavior suggest that such events would trigger violent outbursts from the entity, yet it has only responded by leaving the area. SCP-6004 then proceeded to the Amazon rainforest, where it remained for a further three days. Achievement of SCP-6004's Goals The other primary cause of SCP-6004's reduced hostility is likely a result of it achieving its goals, primarily the reversion of the global environment to a state similar to that of pre-human habitation, and the repopulation of various species of endangered and extinct flora and fauna. It has been observed that as global temperatures have fallen, SCP-6004 has appeared less aggressive. The same can be said in regards to global wildlife populations rising, and the reduction of air pollution. Beyond a reduction in the number of attacks carried out by SCP-6004, it has also been observed that the entity has not caused the anomalous growth of vegetation or regurgitation of wildlife since the February 13th 2022. While attacks on human structures and settlements can be seen as an expression of aggression on behalf of SCP-6004, the generation of forests, wildlife, lakes, and rivers is exclusively motivated by returning its environment to a pre-human state. The cessation of this behavior indicates that the entity is satisfied with the current world state. Other Behaviors of SCP-6004 Following its visitation to the Amazon rainforest, SCP-6004 has been sighted resting within large bodies of water multiple times. Its movements have become noticeably more sluggish, displaying signs of fatigue including yawning. It has been heading in a consistently west-southwesterly direction, with predictive models placing it as heading towards the Wallamy National Park, where it was first discovered. Conclusion Barring unforeseen outcomes, or provocation of SCP-6004. It is estimated that it will return to the site of its discovery by late October 2022 and enter a period of hibernation. As such, Project Mongoose research is being utilized in the development of technologies capable of ensuring that SCP-6004 remains in hibernation, which will be installed on location when ready. Following this, it's possible that the widespread use of amnestics on global populations may allow the Foundation to rebuild a veil of secrecy and resume its previous mission. Addendum 6004-6 Following the containment of SCP-6004, attacks on humans by wild animals have continued to be much more frequent than before its discovery. These attacks have universally occurred within newly formed wilderness areas and display the use of teamwork beyond the capabilities of species involved with some cases involving the cooperation of multiple differing species. However, these attacks have become less frequent as time progresses. Eyewitness statements have observed that where animal species would previously chase or attack any individual found within wilderness areas, animals have more frequently been seen to observe people at a distance, often withdrawing after a short period of time. Attacks by these animals can be broadly categorized into five categories. Rabid, Provoked, Defensive, Predatory, and Guided. The former four varieties are considered typical and not a Foundation concern, except in the fifth variety. Guided attacks are believed to occur under the influence of SCP-6004. The working theory is that SCP-6004 is in whole or in part responsible for this behavior and it may involve lingering influence associated with apparent desire to prevent human impact on natural environments. While attacks of this nature were previously observed to be immediate and coordinated, more recent encounters appear to have been limited to individuals who were in the process of activities discouraged by current containment procedures, such as land clearing, waste dumping, and recreational hunting. Given the trend of observation before attack, it is believed that sustainable Low-impact activities within wilderness areas will soon be safe for the civilian population to engage in, along with low-impact construction.
Item number SCP-6004 Object Class Keter Site Responsible ABS NTS Provisional Site 6004 Director Kate Lloyd Research Head Monaro Nidi Assigned Task Force MTF Omicron 40 Level 4 6004 Classified Item number SCP-6004 Object Class Keter Special Containment Procedures The portion of Wallamy National Park containing SCP-6004, a recently formed lake over a subterranean cavern with an approximate diameter of 450 meters, is to be restricted from public access. Under no circumstance may civilian or governmental individuals enter the containment area. Should this occur, all persons involved are to be detained, questioned, and amnesticized before being released. A total of 27 Lloyd Tibble's consciousness notification devices have been installed around the perimeter of the containment area, at a depth of 4 to 28 meters, in an effort to ensure SCP-6004 does not exit its hibernation. Derived from Project Mongoose, Scranton Reality Anchors, and other technologies provided by donors and derived from assets, Lloyd Tibble's consciousness notification devices LTCNDs, are designed to block an entity from accessing a conscious state of mind, locking them into states of consciousness ranging from sleep, coma, or even a cessation of all awareness. For a more comprehensive summary of LTCNDs, refer to document Lloyd Tibble CND-40-6004. To further ensure SCP-6004 does not breach containment, the Foundation is to continue to encourage world governments to limit expansion in the wilderness areas. All human activity within these areas must be as non-destructive as possible. To ensure this, the new modern culture has adopted appropriate trends and practices under the covert guidance of the Foundation. A joint effort between the Foundation, the Global Occult Coalition, and the Mana Charitable Foundation has been established to anonymously produce food, construction, and technological materials rendered impractical to produce conventionally by these containment procedures. SCP-6004 is an extremely large serpentine entity currently measuring approximately 700 km in length and 1.3 times 10 to the 17th power kilograms in weight, currently in a state of hibernation within a submerged cavern located in the area of Wallamy National Park, New South Wales, Australia. SCP-6004's appearance has been known to shift in the past, and currently resembles an extremely large Oxyuranus gutilitus, common taipan, with features of Morelia spilota, carpet python. Its coloration has consistently been primarily black, with dull prismatic stripes running vertically down its length, with a pale underbelly. SCP-6004 possesses a pair of curved bone or ivory horns and far larger and more numerous teeth than what is seen in non-anomalous snakes. Horns feature thousands of engraved depictions of wildlife. SCP-6004's physical capabilities have been extensively observed and studied. It is capable of exceptionally rapid movement, up to 2,700 km per hour on land, and far greater in aquatic or airborne environments. This movement often creates large rifts in the terrain, and tsunamis in the water. SCP-6004 exhibits strength and durability far beyond what its proportions would suggest, able to exert bite forces powerful enough to crush anomalously hardened bunkers, destroy mountains via bodily impact, and leap into the lower exosphere. It is able to fly within the upper troposphere in a fashion similar to swimming. Due to a paradoxical physiology, SCP-6004 is simultaneously tangible and intangible. This renders it largely impervious to conventional physical harm, with only several minutes of concentrated fire by Project Mongoose having been seen to superficially injure the entity. SCP-6004 displayed a compelling and direct influence over the natural world, up to and including a clear influence over the behavior of wild animals. During the latter parts of its previous activity, attacks by various large and small fauna on humans were common. These attacks often involved multiple disparate species working in tandem, 
until apparently satisfied. This behavior has continued under specific circumstances after SCP-6004's hibernation, universally involving aggressive habitat expansion or activities such as recreational hunting acting as catalysts. It is extremely probable that any future conscious activity on the part of SCP-6004 may lead to the extinction of human civilization. For this reason, for the survival of society, it must remain asleep.